Yo guys, what's going on? It's your boy Soren here today again with another After Effects tutorial. So today we're going to be going over uh, a paint splatter effect where it's uh, a moving dot hits a box and then uh, you know the splatter happens. This is a little motion graphics request that I had from one of my latest edits which uh, I'll show on scene right now. <laughs> Alright, so that's just what it looks like. Here's what the little preview looks like. This is just what we're going to be making today. So let's go ahead and hop into a new composition. You can do this with any size, any frame rate, whatever you need. I'm just doing 1080 by 1080. Make it a square because I make vines. And then now the first thing we're going to do is add a new solid layer. You can do this with a shape layer if you want to do that, but it doesn't really matter. So you're going to go ahead and grab your ellipsis mask tool. Uh, it's right here uh, two to the left of the text layer. If you have a box there for some reason, click and hold with the left mouse button and then go over to ellipse tool and you'll be ready all right so we're gonna go ahead and go to the center and create our mask so if you click and drag hold down control and hold down shift it'll give you a nice uniform circle that expands from the center perfect and then now if we hit M on our keyboard we can bring up the mask path so the first thing we're gonna be creating with this is the uh, the little comet trail behind the dot that you saw was moving because it's gonna be an assisted motion blur because in reality the dot itself is not actually moving so we I went about half a second into the composition and that's why I'm gonna make my first keyframe of when it's still a circle and then as you know it gets it slowly starts to move we're going to the motion blur is gonna get stronger so if we move about another quarter of a second or a little bit more up we're going to change the mass path so you're going to want to grab your universal tool and shift click on one of the buttons here to bring up all of the handles and you're going to grab a handle in the opposite of the direction you want the the paintball to move in so if mine is moving to the right i'm grabbing the left one and so i move this back a little bit and then now you want to grab one of these handles sorry it's kind of hard to see here the yellow against the white and you're going to want to hold down control and click it to move each handle independently to get this kind of teardrop comet trail shape. And now that we have that, you can see it goes from a circle to the shape you created. And then secondly, if it's an assisted motion blur, you're going to want to create the blur portion. So you're going to duplicate the layer by hitting control D on your keyboard and then going over here to effects and presets and looking up our directional blur. So we're going to put the directional blur on and you want to change the direction of it to my ball is moving left to right so i want to change it to something horizontal so about 90 degrees it would work fine and then i'm going to keyframe key frame the blur length and then at the same time when the top layer gets to its final shape we're going to put the blur length up to about 100 you can just toy with that value to get to where you want and now you see we got a good blur going on but if it's moving to the right, all of the blur should be to the left because it's, it's moving fast in one direction. So we got to get rid of all this stuff here at the front because that wouldn't make uh, much sense logically. So what we're going to do to that is go to position. And uh, actually here we're going to hit U, hold down shift and hit P to bring up the position while not messing with any of these keyframes. You're going to start it here on the first keyframe. Go a little bit farther or to where all the other keyframes are. And you're going to move it back until you can no longer see the blur out in front. And then what I'll, that'll do is just put all the blurring behind it. So now we have a, if I preview this, we have a nice little trail behind it. All right, so for now we're done with our circle here with our dot and we're gonna create the background. So we're gonna go to layer, create a new solid uh, and we're gonna name this uh, background. And you're gonna put this background layer at the bottom because it's the background and you're gonna put a turbulent uh, noise onto it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit softer just a white and a light gray just because that's what uh, I want it to look like And you can mess with these as much as you want You don't even have to use this setting if you don't want if you already have a, a background that you're using just skip to this next part But anyway, we have the right colors for our background here and now we're gonna uh, Animate it. So we're gonna put an offset on here to move the background All right, so what the offset tool does it just allows you to Move the background left and right and it keeps a seam here where it's repeating the layer so if we start at the top or at the beginning where everything starts moving we're gonna hit a keyframe on the shift center two and we're gonna move about a second or so forward about to the point where we want the the dot here to make impact and depending on which way you're going you're gonna want it to move either left or right up or down you gotta make that decision but uh you want it to end at a point where there's no seam showing so my composition is 
1080 by 1080 so i have to move in a multiple of 1080 either way so i'm gonna go at 540 minus uh i don't know let's see eight multiples of 1080 so i just did 1080 times eight there and it doesn't look like anything happened but it's just uh it moved a whole bunch to the other in the other direction and now we're going to easy ease those keyframes so if you have the shift center to effect selected here all you gotta do is go up to this little graph button at the top of the layers and then we're gonna click and drag to highlight both of them and come down here and hit this little squiggly line it's third from the right and then this is just showing us how fast the um, keyframes are being affected and we want it to be at the bottom so it starts slow and then be at the very top of the end where it's uh, going at its fastest point that way it starts slow goes very fast and then when it gets done it just stops that'll be part of the impact at the end so now if we uh, preview this we see that it, it looks it's starting to get the effect that's moving now and our next part is going to be to create the box at the end here where it comes in and it makes impact with the dot all right so to do this you're gonna for this i recommend using a shape layer and then go back up here to our masking tool and go to the rectangle and we're gonna create just a nice square about a little bit smaller than the composition size uh, it's filled in here so just go down to contents rectangle uh, uncheck the fill and check on the stroke I'm going to change my stroke color to black and then I'm going to just up the stroke width give it a nice kind of thickness kind of density and there we go so we want to impact or we want it to be done we want it to be centered when our background stops so right here we're going to keyframe the position for it so hit p on your keyboard keyframe it and then a little bit before that we want it to be coming in uh, pretty quickly so we're not going to move too far back in the timeline and we're going to have it coming in from screen right to the center so we keyframe it there it comes and it comes in and then when the background stops the square also stops now the only problem here is that the dot doesn't really move because we didn't change in those keyframes so what i'm going to do is go to our dot keyframe here i'm going to turn off the blur really quick and then we're going to go back to the mask position and we're just going to change this so when it does start to look like it should hit the box about right there we're going to move it so that way it moves kinetically with the box so we're going to keyframe the mask position here go to the next one and then move the path that way it moves with the box so we're just going to move this over oh, excuse me hold shift and click move this over here move this down here and move the front so it can't be seen along the edge of the box and now it looks like it's kind of squishing against the edge of the box so i'm going to finish doing this and then we'll come right back all right so all i did was uh i kept doing the thing where it squishes and then eventually it should be gone and what i'm going to do i'm going to go to the last keyframe or the last frame of that layer by selecting it and hitting all my keyboard and then also ending my blurring layer there as well and now uh, to make sure that the blur will line up exactly with the, the dot itself if I go and hit the mask path here I'll select all of these keyframes and all I gotta do is copy them and then paste them onto the blurred layer and now it should be lined up exactly with our dot there we go alright so now we have the box coming in it hits the dot and the dot disappears perfect last thing we gotta do is just make the paint splatter so this can be made in, uh, so all right, so here what we're gonna do is open up a new composition, name it paint, uh, gotta call it paint too because I already have one in here. And what you're gonna do is make a new layer, solid, I don't think it matters, it doesn't matter what color it is. And you're gonna go up to your effects and presets and type in CC, CC Mr. Mercury. And drag that onto the layer. And what that did is created a generated little mercury effect here you can see it's just kind of spilling out from the center but ours is more it hits and then it splatters in all directions so it's not just being pulled down by gravity so to get this you're gonna go over here to the gravity option and you can turn it to zero and then now it's just erupting from the center and uh, just going out in all directions and then you can change the radius of how big the center is or how far it explodes like that by playing with the x-axis do the same thing with the y-axis 
uh, you can change which direction it goes in, how wide the producer or where the producer is. So if you want it to start from the top, start from the left, start from the right. Uh, I'm going to have it start from the left because that's where our, um, our paint hits from. So it's going to start from the left and then explode outward. And then we're going to up the radius a little bit just so it will it'll, it'll go a little farther. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to put that back down. I lied. My bad. All right, well, anything, anyway, we're going to keep that there. And we're just going to leave this as a uh, in a separate composition because we're going to go back to our other, our main composition here and pull that paint layer in. Since all of our colors are the same, it doesn't really matter where I put it. And the reason why we left it as a composition is we're going to use the time effects to uh, have it be a little bit more explosive. So I'm going to go, I'll right click on the layer, I'm going to go over to time and hit enable time remapping. I'm going to bring this first keyframe over to this, uh, or the, the drop goes away. And then this last keyframe, let's see, we're not going to use that one. We're going to use it before it starts changing really wildly. So we'll stop about right here. We'll hit another keyframe for the time remap and bring that down to the end. And we can delete this last keyframe over here Just by hitting delete on our keyboard. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to take these keyframes. We're going to easy, easy ease them in so they look a little bit smoother. Highlight them all, hit easy ease, and we're going to start so it starts fast and then it slows down. So we're going to bring that handle up, bring this one over, make your curves look like that so it's nice and smooth. Perfect. So now uh, it explodes onto the screen, but it's coming out the edge of the box here to the left. So we're just going to add a mask. You can go back up to the masking tool while you have this layer selected and just create a box around here. So it will only appear inside that box. Perfect. So now that's pretty much it. If we go ahead and give it a little preview here, this will be our dot move across the screen, hit the box and explode in the paint. And that's pretty much it. You guys are good to go. You go ahead and you know mess around with this. If you want to use this uh, project file, it will be down in the description below. If you have any other tutorial requests, be sure to leave them in a comment. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Soren and I'm out. Thank you.